On today's show, Rivian patents a new charging technology that could see it produce the fastest charging EV yet. A California official says that Tesla's looking to build special 12-seat vans for use in a brand new boring company tunnel. And Germany enacts a new law that will require every gas station across the nation to offer charging for electric vehicles. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and we're 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another Ecotech Roundup show. I hope that you and yours are safe and that you're continuing the path back to normalcy. Thank you for joining me. Rivian has been in the news quite a lot this week laying off 40 of its staff at its Plymouth, Michigan facility, where simultaneously hiring new former Tesla engineers connected with the supercharger network. Rivian says the layoffs were performance-based and account for less than 2% of the company's total workforce, but the hires suggest that the company is looking to build its own charging network. If we add in the news received at the end of the week that Rivian has just successfully patented a new battery technology to allow 300 kilowatt rapid charging, I think you can see where this is going. According to the patent, Rivian's developed a way to switch battery wiring internally for the purposes of charging, allowing a 400 volt battery pack to use an 800 volt charging station simply by rewiring how the cells connect on the fly. As we know more about this tech, we will of course share. In September, it will be five years since the Dieselgate scandal hit the headlines, but this week, the Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, sitting in Anchorage, Alaska, passed a judgment that could see Volkswagen continue to pay for its misdeeds. In a landmark, unanimous decision, the three-judge panel ruled that even though Volkswagen has settled at a federal and state level, paying massive fines for illegally circumventing emissions regulations with certain diesel vehicles, the automaker is not exempt from being prosecuted at the county level. This not only means that counties across the US can now file action against Volkswagen for violating air quality standards, but it also means that Volkswagen could rightly end up paying billions of dollars per year in fines for the time those vehicles were on the road. It's likely we'll see this go to the Supreme Court. Nissan has been promoting the advances made to its electric all-wheel drive system this week, publishing new videos of its prototype all-wheel drive Nissan Leaf going through its paces. In a press release talking about the system, Nissan says the E4ORCE system, pronounced E-Force, offers, quote, powerful performance and unprecedented control. But while the E-Force system is being demonstrated in a Nissan Leaf, and looks pretty good fun from behind the wheel, I wouldn't expect we'll see an all-wheel drive leaf any time soon. Instead, expect Nissan, which as I pointed out a few shows ago, is pretty cash-strapped, to debut this system in its upcoming Nissan Aria, the only new non-Japanese Nissan EV to come to market in the next few years. At the moment, if you want a Tesla-built electric vehicle with the capability to seat more than five adults, you'll need to get yourself a Tesla Model X. At least, that's until the Model Y starts being offered with more seats. But this week, San Bernardino County Supervisor Kurt Hagman said that Tesla is about to start building a 12-seat electric passenger vehicle, not for public resale, but rather for use in the new Boring Company tunnel between Rancho Cagamora with Ontario International Airport in California. The proposal, which has been given the go-ahead to proceed to the next phase of planning, would need to shuttle 10 million people per year, hence the need for a large vehicle, a vehicle that was larger than originally planned. Neither Tesla nor the Boring Company has officially announced anything. We're all used to the idea that autonomous vehicles will help lower accidents and deaths on our roads, perhaps even ending them completely. And in traditional automotive circles, the idea that we can lower accidents and deaths to zero has constantly been put forward as a utopian future that we can look forward to. But a new study from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety suggests that goal is far from achievable. Studying more than 5,000 crashes in detail, the IIHS says that while autonomous vehicles may be able to prevent one third of all of the accidents we have today, they cannot prevent all accidents. That's because current autonomous vehicle technology isn't perfect and likely never will be. 
It's statistically implausible that we can prepare autonomous vehicles for every eventuality. It's no secret that Tesla has been busy acquiring companies over the last few years that will enable it to bring the entire vehicle production process in-house. It's even been buying companies that focus on building the machines used in the vehicle production process. This week, Electrek uncovered a small purchase of a small automotive production equipment specialist that was made by Tesla in 2017. The company specializes in equipment for automotive production lines, specifically automating them. The company is called Compass Automation, and it's based in a small city outside of Chicago. And while it still operates under its original name, Tesla's job site has just posted job listings for the company this week, calling electrical and mechanical machine builders to come and work on building, installing and supporting Tesla's automated production line process. We know Tesla recently purchased more robots for its facilities, and it looks like fully automated is the way the firm will go. While its vehicles are no longer available in many countries around the world, General Motors has been a reasonably consistent part of the plug-in marketplace since 2010. And this week, Reuters reported that GM has been working on developing its own electric van, aimed primarily at delivery firms and business users. Given that we know GM is working on several electric pickups, it's not a stretch to assume the delivery vehicle would share some of the underpinnings with the same. And with GM's Ultium battery system designed from the ground up to be modular, it's highly likely that this report is credible. Reuters also suggests such a vehicle would allow GM to compete against Ford and Rivian in the electric delivery van segment, as well as get a leg up on Tesla, which has yet to announce any commercial delivery van solution. As it exits the hell of the last wave of coronavirus, Germany's Angela Merkel has relieved a new 130 euro economic recovery plan that includes legislation to mandate that all petrol stations in the nation provide electric car charging too. While Germans are starting to buy more electric vehicles, only 3.3% of all cars registered last month were electric, up from 1.8% in the entirety of 2019. In order to meet its Paris Accord targets and to shift away from fossil fuels, Germany needs to transition its nation's fleet to electric quickly, and putting electric charging at existing filling stations makes total sense. It not only makes it easier to find a charging station, but it's easier for owners transitioning to electric for the first time. The first 500 examples of the AI Waze U5 electric SUV from Chinese automaker AI Waze are on their way to Europe. The automaker, which up until this point was a Chinese market-only brand, is expanding its operations and assuming it can deliver on reliability, could make some serious waves in the EV marketplace. That's because a top-spec U5, which is about the same size as a Tesla Model Y, could retail from as little as €40,000 before incentives and offer a WLTP test cycle range of around 250 miles. The first batch of U5s will be used by Hertz Rental on the island of Corsica, but private sales should follow soon. We're often asked, who killed the electric car? And of course, if you know the film of the same name, the immediate answer might be GM, Toyota, Ford and others. But in Indiana, the Blue Indy Electric Car Share project has just come to its official end after a lack of interest from the public in shared community electric vehicles. As reported this week, many of the vehicles from the program have now been taken to the scrapyard for crushing and recycling, with battery packs and usable parts salvaged for second life and spares. The best condition Blue Indy cars, meanwhile, will be heading to Los Angeles to join the LA fleet of rideshare vehicles from the same company responsible for Blue Indy. It's great to see these projects pop up in cities, but frankly, unless we start using them, they won't last, and we'll only have ourselves to blame. And finally, coal-fired power stations have long been part of the power generation mix of the electrical grid. And depending on where you live, how much power comes from coal can vary from a few percent all the way up to 60% or more. But the UK has just celebrated a very special milestone that we should all celebrate, especially if we're interested in getting the grid cleaner and greener. For the past 55 days and counting, the UK hasn't burned a single piece of coal to provide power to the national grid. While the grid mix still has some fossil fuels in it, including natural gas, coal hasn't been used. And that means that May was the first ever month 
ever in the UK in which it was completely coal free for its electricity needs. I don't know about you, but that's a great piece of news and here's hoping that other grids that still use coal can follow. And on that note, we're done for the day. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And of course, while you have that browser open, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? It's pretty simple to make the switch. And in doing so, you'll help New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean, green, renewable power that will keep the land beautiful for many generations to come. I'll be making some more fun content for you all to enjoy for next week. But until then, Please stay safe, remember to wash your hands and stay healthy. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.